Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of Love It or List It. Love It or List It is a video series on my channel where I use prompts to pick books from my own TBR and by the end of the video I try to determine whether or not I'm going to keep those books or if they're going to be listed on Pango. In this installment we are kind of exploring what Love It or List It is going to look like in the year of 2024 and honestly I have a lot of fun and I think it'll be a little bit reminiscent of Read It Down. So I hope that's exciting! <laughs> Hello, hello my beautiful besties. We are back. We are back with another episode of Love It or List It, which I am so excited about. I'm so excited about Love It or List It this year because if you know about Read It Down, which is a video series that I had on my channel last year, but primarily the year before where I did it like every single month. It was a video series that's similar in concept of like reading down my TBR, but I was including friends in it. And I was like, you know what? I don't even know what I want Love It or List It to look like this year. I don't know if I want to stick to just me picking prompts and then reading it or do I want to do other things even when I was doing love it or list it last year it wasn't always the same in every single video mainly the prompt part was but I was like how can I incorporate other things that I really love especially from read it down because I'm not gonna lie I kind of miss it but I also kind of don't so I asked Aaron, one of my best friends here on booktube and just in general to pick my TBR. I was like what if we just did a love it or list it Aaron edition and she was like absolutely. <laughs> So in this specific episode, we are having Erin pick prompts from her prompt jar because she has a TBR prompt jar, which I will link that video down below. And she's gonna pick three prompts from that jar, film a video giving me a book that goes with that prompt that's off of my TBR. But I don't get to see all of the books at once. I only get to see the book as soon as I have finished another book. So I've been given one torture video today as she has named it. <laughs> I already know what book she picked for me because she sent me the video and she said, you need to immediately watch it and FaceTime me. Despite me knowing it, we are going to watch the video together so that you can see what she picked. Hi, I'm Steph. Well, obviously I'm not Steph, but this is Steph's channel. And let me take you back to about a week ago where I texted Steph and I was like, listen, you need to come up with another idea where I can control your TBR. Because if you don't know a little bit of Stephanie and Aaron Lord, that was the start of our great love story back in 2022 when I was the guest for Read It Down. Steph's all too famous reading vlog series where she was trying to read down her physical TBR and my selections led her to all-time favorite author series character you know five star read so here I am to recreate that magic I don't know if lightning can strike just as hard as it did before but here we are I'm here to try again and this time we're introducing a little element of chaos so I will be using my TBR jar and the prompts that I have in here to control Steph's TBR this week she doesn't know what she's reading I don't know what she's reading but we're gonna find out together so if you're interested in seeing what Steph's gonna be reading this week and her thoughts on my selections and whether or not I remain the queen of her heart and the best book recommender ever keep on watching okay so Steph decided that she wanted me to use a TBR jar to pick out her books so we're gonna find out what she's gonna be reading together and hopefully I get to push my agenda in a way that I enjoy so that the TBR jar gods be on my side so let's oh, let's see what she's gonna be reading okay let's mix it up Let's make it good. Okay, first prompt. Australian author? Um... I'm gonna have to think long and hard about <gasps> wait wait <laughs> oh my god let me do a quick google search to check that this author is Australian because honestly I could not have planned this better if I tried <laughs> okay Google has shown me that my guess about this author's background from having like read it somewhere before is correct. 
so the very first book that Steph will be reading in this vlog is The Crown of Elsa Curses by Shay Bree. <laughs> Literally, I chose this book for Steph for her 24 and 24, but then she posted a video about like books that she was unsure about potentially unhauling and i saw that the love of my life veronica speedwell was on there and so i had to scrap that but i've always wanted to have to read this book this is the first book in an epic fantasy romance series that is enemies to lovers we have faded maids we have fae we have witches and this is truly epic fantasy romance but going into this one these two characters are so enemies to lovers that there's actually no romance in the first book there is no kiss there is no smut there is not even a hug in this book because they hate each other's guts they are mortal enemies so in this in this series we follow these two main characters soren and i can't remember the female main character's name off the top of my head but she is a witch and there's like the mother the crone the maiden and he is the prince of the fae and he cannot uh, ascend to being uh, the king until he you know is mated and they have this mental connection and you know some tragic events happen 200 years go by and they you know stop speaking to one another and then uh circumstances arise and they meet and he finds out that his mate is his mortal enemy a witch because the witches are responsible for killing his parents and so they have to work together to fight off um this larger enemy that is plaguing their nation and this is so epic the world building is phenomenal i really enjoyed this one i stayed up to like four in the morning reading this um this was like a 600 page fantasy romance and the sequel is coming out in april so this is perfect 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 i'm actually very excited about this but i'm also very nervous there is no audiobook so i will be raw dog in this one and i'm also nervous because my reading has been weird so this is probably going to be slow but I'm ready. I'm ready for an enemies to lovers, a true enemies to lovers. Goose is asleep on my lap and the rules of the house are if a cat is asleep on your lap, you don't move. You can't move, you're not allowed to move, so you just deal with it. See, look at him sleeping and it's like rainy out. You're not gonna be able to tell, but it's very rainy out. So I've been sitting on the couch listening to an ambient room, which I realized I did not pause, so you can probably hear it in the background. This is such a disaster. <laughs> anyway, all that's to say is I've been reading. As you know, Aaron chose the crown of cur oaths and curses, curses and oaths one of those and if you didn't know there are two novellas that you're supposed to read before you start this book i don't know how necessary they are to read the book but i've been under the impression that they're like necessary like you have to read them before you dive into the full-length book so anyway i had planned to read this book a while ago like last summer or something like that and all i needed to do was read the sword and so i just finished the sword like a day ago and realized that i didn't remember enough from the scepter to feel comfortable to move into the book so yesterday i ended up reading the scepter and honestly i love that book like it's a five out of five for me i don't know why it's only like 95 pages but something about it was just like such a a good introduction to this world and the witches in here very interesting so anyway i just started the book and i'm like five chapters in still loving it but the reason i wanted to update was because i think that the world building in here is so interesting like every time the author is telling us more about this world more about the magic system more about the wars that are raging within different continents in this world it just feels so realized like i'm very captivated and let me tell you i am coming off the cusp of being in the weirdest reading slump where I wasn't actually 
not reading, but I wasn't finishing anything. And so to dive into this world and just be so immersed by it, and I'm like so interested at the way she's using creatures, and I'm not saying it's the most unique thing that I've ever read in terms of what kind of creatures you're seeing and what kind of mythology you're seeing. The way that she's doing it is so captivating for me. And I really love that we have Fae, we have High Fae, we have Lower Born Fae, we have these witches. I've been trying to figure out as I've been reading if witches are just their own distinct race or if they are a version of fey that's something i've been a little bit confused about i am under the impression that witches are their own race of being because we're seeing elves we've seen banshees we've seen shadow wraiths we've seen goblins there's just so many fun things in here in terms of like creatures and mythology but then the world building is so interesting as well because there's like these two wars that are happening simultaneously and one of them is based on the fact that a king decided to go against what was fated for him because he didn't like the fate that he was given. So he decided to go against it and it just unleashed hell in his land and he needed to call for help from all over the kingdom to stop this war and so at the beginning of this book we're seeing the end of this war so in the novellas this war has been hinted at and we know our female main character rook she went off to fight in this war and then our male main character he's been fighting the war against the witches for god knows how long i can't even remember it's been like probably a thousand years or something like that. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but it's been hundreds and hundreds of years. His parents were slaughtered. And so he's like anti-wit. I mean, at some point he calls them it. He doesn't even call them like he, she, anything. He calls witches it. And so our male love interest is a high fae. He's actually the rightful king in the southern lands, but because of the way this world works, he is fated to a mate. And the only time that you can take your throne is when you are finally with your mate, like united with your mate, and they have like sealed that bond, etc. Then they can take the throne and be the king. So right now his uncle is the king, or he, I think they call him the regent, while he waits for his fated mate. And we already know that the two characters are fated mates mates but they don't know that yet and she's a witch and he's a fae and so they're literally on opposite sides of the war and they hate each other but the whole thing that i'm getting at is i just really love this world building i'm interested to see what the full-length novel has in store for me because i loved the scepter the sword was pretty good it wasn't as good as the scepter for me but i think that's because i just really love witches in general like the lore of witches and this is an interesting version of witches that we're seeing but everything just feels so well realized so i'm really excited to get deeper into the story. I think it's like 600 pages, so I have a while. But yeah, I wanted to update about that because I was just sitting here reading this and it's all I could think about was how much I'm enjoying the world and the magic system itself. I am finally halfway through this. It's taken me a little while because I'm not gonna lie, the first 30% was tough for me to get through. <laughs> it's just because the combination of the pacing and then like lack of plot and so many repetitive things, it was just making it hard to get through the first 30%. But once I hit like 35%, it's definitely picking up pacing wise and like my interest in the plot and what's moving forward and kind of unfolding here. But I have to start out with the negatives of how I'm feeling about this. Like this is truly enemies to lovers. This isn't like we hate each other, we come from opposite sides. And so we will eventually fall in love because we have sort of a soft spot for each other and we find each other a little bit attractive. No, like they don't find each other attractive. The only thing that's pulling them together is the fates. Like they can feel the fate bond really deeply and they both loathe it. They wish death upon each other, especially Soren, and they really do not like each other. 50% in, 55% in, there still is no inkling that this hate is gonna simmer out and they're gonna fall in love. And maybe, maybe Jay Bree girl bossed a little close to the sun with this one. No, I'm actually excited that it's actually really truly an enemies to lovers. I mean, assuming we know it's gonna be lovers, but we don't know that yet. And from what I know about this book in general, we don't really see the lovers part come in at all. And I've been getting that feeling the whole time. But anyway, going back to my point before about the pacing and like the repetitive nature of this writing, since we know that Soren especially hates the witches, it's a constant point of contention for him and something that he continuously talks about. And the thing is, is that Jabri also has never met a sentence that she didn't like. There was some editing that needed to happen here because there's a lot of repetitive things. Like I'm not joking when I tell you, we will get a paragraph of something first time, we're learning about it, cool. It'll probably be repeated 
in another chapter down the line. Fine, you're reiterating the information. But then it will be repeated like four or five, six different times. And I'm like, okay, we know. We got it. We understand. So there is a lot of repetitiveness in here, which has been a real struggle for me because it especially happens in Soren's POV. And he is a character that I find to be very insufferable, but very well written because he is so insufferable and so like unmovable in his beliefs and his bigotry which I can understand because of everything that's happening and everything that he's witnessed and experienced. But he gives absolutely no grace to Rook at all. And Rook is just like, oh, I love Rook, okay? She is holding this book together for me because if I only had to have Soren's POV, I would have never made it through this book. But Rook is everything to me. She is such a good character. I love her. I just really, really like her as a character. I think she is so well written. And I think that of this dynamic, I love reading her POV and I race through her chapters and I'm always excited to get back to her POV. And then when we're in Soren's, I kind of glaze over a little bit. I think the thing I love about his chapters are we get to see more of the world and we get to see more more about this war. That's my favorite part about him, but I would really love to see some growth. I mean, we are 55% into this book and not a ton has happened. There was this major scene that took place that I was a mess at, I was sobbing at, and I really loved that scene and I'm hoping that that scene is the catalyst to some changes that need to be made because right now I'm feeling like I don't understand why this is 600, over 600 pages. Yeah, it's 649 pages. I'm just finding it a little bit of a struggle to understand why it's so long. But that being said, I'm still really, really enjoying this world. Like I said before in another clip, I love the world so much, like everything that we're getting to see and all of the different creatures and the politics and just the magic within Rook is so interesting because we're seeing two types of magic. Like the witches that are within this war, we're seeing that they have a corrupted magic because they've gone against nature and what they're kind of made for and what their agreement with the land kind of is so it's been interesting to see the two types of magic but I especially love seeing Rook's magic and the way that she is just so I don't know I don't even know how to explain it like she's so steadfast in her way of life and knowing what is right for the land and the way that she mourns for the land because it's dying since so many of the fae and the witches have turned their back on magic and have turned their back on a lot of the rituals that they used to do to keep the land thriving and happy and it's been really really cool to see especially because i love witches but i really love nature based magic too because it's not something i see that often so i think the world is so well fleshed out i think the magic system is extremely interesting and i love rook as a character and soren is a character that I understand. I don't necessarily love him. I think he's insufferable, but that means to me that he is pretty well written. My only struggle really has been the pacing and like the repetitiveness of the writing, but I have 200-ish, a little over 200-ish pages left, so I'm hoping that I finish it today actually. I fell asleep with my hair wet last night because I was so tired. I've been having a lot of anxiety, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm just doing my best, but my anxiety often makes me very tired even though I can't sleep through the night. So one of the things that helps me is taking a shower at night and I needed to wash my hair. So I was like, whatever, I'll just wash my hair and then I'll actually do my curl routine and diffuse it before I fall asleep. But I fell asleep before I diffused it. So I just threw it in a bun and um, it was a choice that I made. But we're not here to talk about my hair. We're here to talk about the crown of oaths, not oats and curses. I have so many mixed feelings, but I will say that the majority of my feelings are very positive. And I would say that I'm leaning towards a four stars. And that four stars is purely for my love for Rook Spain, our main female love interest in here, our main female character. She is a badass. She is everything to me. She is the only reason, the only reason that I would give this four stars because Soren can get wrecked. Although I'm not gonna lie to you, at the very end, I had like a little soft moment for him. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you've read the end of this book, especially the last like 
10% of the book, if even that. But the only thing I do have to say about this is on one hand, which I mentioned before, I do understand where Soren is coming from because he and his people have spent hundreds of years viewing witches as the enemy and they've never been faced with something that kind of went against what they've been seeing for years and years and years. So I completely understand it. That being said though, the many times that he is faced with the fact that like maybe this is different and chooses to turn his back on it, chooses to continue to believe certain things, that's where I was like, I wish I could punch through paper right now. I'm not even a violent person, but reading makes me really violent. Especially this read, oh my God. This book made me feel so many emotions. In some cases, I didn't even know I could have this much rage towards a character and towards certain situations. So it definitely has to be a four stars because I do think that while I had some mixed feelings about certain things in this book, specifically the writing. The writing is what keeps this from ever being five stars and I'm a little bit concerned about the rest of the series because I'm hoping that obviously Soren has some character growth and I know it's not gonna be like overnight and I also am just interested to see how the romance ends up coming into play because I think it's been said before but if you don't know while this is a fantasy romance series there is no romance in here at all like they don't even touch each other there's no hints at a romance happening really they are brought together because the fates are bringing them together and that's very prevalent throughout this book that the fates are bringing them together not that they in any way shape or form have any attraction to each other or even like a thought that ooh you know, I could like her or I could like him. Like that does not happen in here. The main male love interest, Soren, he doesn't even call Rook by her name the entirety of this book. The entirety of the book. So if you're really looking for a true enemies to lovers, this is it. But going back to what I was saying, this can't be a five stars because the writing really took me out of the story so many times. And it's not the fact of characters, how characters are written. It is that there is so much repetitiveness in here. Like she will repeat things to you, the author, Jay Bree. <laughs> She would repeat things to you upwards of 10 times as if we didn't get it the first nine times that it was told to you. And she doesn't say it in vastly different ways to remind you of things. It's like literally the same monologue or inner dialogue that we had however many chapters ago and however many chapters before that. And I think that had we cut out so much of this repetitiveness, this book wouldn't have been that long. And I don't think that the book needed to be this long. And I love long books. I especially love long fantasy books, fantasy romance books, but this one was just long for the sake of being long simply because it was so repetitive. And apparently this is Jay Bree's writing style because somebody else confirmed that in her other series, I think it's the Broken Bond series, she did the exact same thing with being repetitive. So I think that's just her style. But the second book comes out in exactly a month from today. And when I tell you that I pre-ordered it, I'm ready, I will be reading it the day that it comes out because the way this ended, such a cliffhanger, it just ends. There, no, no preamble, it just ends. So I really, really need to know <laughs> what happens in the second book. And I'm also curious when the third book's gonna be published because the placeholder is literally a few days after the second book is coming out, which has to be wrong, right? But what if? So I think I'm gonna settle on a four stars just because I do think the character development and like how the characters were written were obviously so well done because I had such emotional reactions to them, but also I had a lot of emotional reactions throughout the entirety of this book, despite it being too long. I mean, I think it's safe to say Erin knows when I'm gonna like something. I feel like every time Erin picks a book for me, she just kind of knows that it's something that I'm gonna like. I especially think that she knows I really love strong badass female characters and Rooksbane is probably one of my new favorite female main characters. I have quite a few female characters that I love, I adore, but Rooksbane actually has to be up there. And I think part of that is just obviously her badassery and like how steadfast she is in her beliefs and how she was raised. But also the witches in here are so cool to me because it's unlike anything that I've read before in a fantasy. And also she is so just in touch with the earth and like the trees and giving back to the earth and the earth giving back to her. I truly loved learning about the witches and I'm glad that we got to spend such a large portion of this book learning about the witches and learning about the magic. And the old magic and the old ways and the old teaching versus the new witches that are very corrupt. I just loved all of that. I'm really excited for the second book because I would love to learn more about the witches, but I also wanna learn more about the High Fae because they also have magic, but it's been lost for many, many years. Also, 
the goblins. Oh my god, I am so excited to learn more about the goblins. Like, they have to be more of a part of this, right? They have to. And I'm so excited to potentially see that. So I can't wait to pick up the second one. So this was definitely a success. Even with my complaints, even with my complaints, this was definitely a success. We have received the second video from Aaron. I am so nervous. I'm not gonna lie to you. I am not predicting what people are picking for me because I just don't, I don't wanna jinx myself. But I am gonna tell you that I think there's a book that might pop up here that I'm not happy about. I'm not happy about it. But part of me thinks she's trying to trick me into thinking she's gonna pick this book. Okay, prop number two. Let's go with this one. Published slash set in 1995. 1995 is the year I was born. So literature was really at its peak. Also, our mutual fave, Assassin's Apprentice, was published in 1995. And I recommended that to her and read it down. So this feels really fitting. I'm going to take a second to think about a book published in 1995 that I want to recommend to Steph. Okay, so I've done a little bit of research and... I was starting to think of a book published in 1995 that I thought you would enjoy. And then I remembered that the goal of this is to read down your TBR. So I went over your TBR and I realized that there isn't a single book on there published in 1995. So I decided to go with the spirit of the prompt rather than the exact prompt because I can't fulfill the exact prompt with your TBR. So what I decided to do is I'm thinking about the last book that I recommended to you from 1995, which was Robin Hobb, coming of age story, start of an epic series, um, a long sprawling series, um, a classic fantasy written by a female author. So when I thought about those and I thought about what on your TBR comes closest to that, I landed on mercedes lackey so i know that you have this whole bind up on your tbr but i'm only going to be putting on arrows of the queen by mercedes lackey this is the beginning of the Voldemort or Voldemar world um and i think this will be a book that you enjoy i hope that i enjoy it too it's obviously on my tbr as well um arrows to the queen is the first book in this series and it's not even that long um, the first book is 206 pages, so I hope that you enjoy this one. Um, and it says, Mercedes Lackey's debut trilogy tells the story of Talia, a daughter of the representative Holder Folk, who was chosen by the immortal companion Roland to become one of the legendary heralds of Valdemar. Companions like Roland are mystical, horse-like beings with powers beyond imagining, including the power to sense and awaken potential for special talents in the mind of certain young men and women like Talia. With Roland's help, Talia will learn to master her unique mental abilities of telepathy and empathy and will grow from an uncertain and inexperienced herald trainee to become the most important herald of all the Queen's own. And together, Talia and Roland who fight to protect the queen, the heir to the throne, and the entire kingdom from dangerous conspiracies, looming unrest, vicious treachery, and evil and, evil and ancient stories to read behind the magic of the heroes themselves. So even based on this analysis, it gives me big farce here, guys. We got a young main character who has these uh, telepathy-like abilities. They have an animal companion. They are helping out the crown and the throne. So based on that, I'm hoping that this one is just as much of a hit as farce here. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay, wait, I'm actually very excited about this. And this happens to be on my TBR for this month. So perfect, perfect, perfect. The other perfect thing about it is there's an audiobook and I am in need of an audiobook because I have a lot of like things that I need to do around the house and at work. So, okay, okay, I can work with this. I can work with this. I'm still really nervous about the last one. But anyway, let's go find the audio and start queen of the arrows arrows of the queen what is the actual title i just know that it's the valdemar series
Please don't mind this. I've been cleaning the house all day. I am actually for the first time in quite a while because I've been very much struggling with my mental health the last like two or three months <laughs> and it just keeps getting worse. Today, I think because it's like sunshiny, I have the day off, I had a full night of sleep and I feel rested, I feel revived, I feel alive. The sun is out and it's gonna be staying out till the wonderful like seven, p.m. and I finished Heirs of the Queen. So it's very short, it's very easy to get through. I ended up reading this in like one sitting, which is why I didn't update you halfway through. And this was a lot of fun. Despite the fact that Talia, our main character, is 13 years old, which I didn't really know going into this. I knew like the gist of the story, but I didn't know the age. I also didn't know that this was kind of like a little bit of a school setting. But I will say that because the character is 13, this does read a little more YA, I guess. But Talia herself actually doesn't read as a 13 year old and it's not necessarily a bad thing and the reason I say that is because of the situation that she's in like she kind of has to be older and also the way that she was raised she's a holder folk and the holder folks end up marrying very young so as soon as she turned 13 the people that are raising her were basically like hey by the way you're 13 now you're gonna get married and she was like absolutely I'm not doing that and she runs away and when she runs away she actually ends up running into a companion and so all of the champions or the heralds of the queen have these companions and Talia recognizes immediately that this is a companion and she feels compelled to return the companion back to the queen. Little did she know that she was actually chosen by the companion and that she is going to like fulfill one of her biggest dreams in life. And so you get to see her learn about this. You get to see her go through a lot of training. You get to see her form relationships with people which she hasn't really ever had true friendship and companionship in her life based on how she was raised. And so it's just really beautiful to see her blossom into an adult in ways, but also she's very adult-like based on how she was raised, but also this position that she finds herself in with the queen is very unique. And it also is another situation that kind of forces her to grow up faster. So while this does read young and while the protagonist is 13, this definitely doesn't fully read like a YA, but it definitely reads like a coming of age. I actually was interested initially in the series because it was compared to Realm of the Elderlings. We already all know I'm obsessed with the Realm of the Elderlings. I'm obsessed with Robin Hobb and so I've been on a classic fantasy journey to try to find something that like reminds me of it. It's not exactly Realm of the Elderlings but just reminds me of it and honestly I feel like all of the classic fantasies that I've read this included give me some pieces of Realm of the Elderlings that I'm missing. This one is really fun because I do feel like it has that tragedy that is in Realm of the Elderlings and you can also feel feel for our main character Talia so much just like Fitz. It's not exactly the same. I feel like Robin Hobb has just like an art for characters but I have to say I was very invested pretty quickly into the story, into Talia, into secondary characters that are forming relationships with Talia, into the relationships and how they were unfolding. There is a lot of death in here and I was surprised by it but there is like a subplot of some sort of treason happening and Talia kind of ends up in the middle of it. So this book was really Really, really interesting. I think it was well done. It read, I don't really know how to explain it. Like this takes place over the span of three years while she's training and going through school. And I think there's a purpose to that, which I can't speak to right now since I haven't finished the trilogy, but based on what I think and where I think this is going, I can see why we would have kind of rushed through three years and just like 200 and some odd pages. And while that threw me off slightly, it didn't throw me off as much as I thought that it would. And overall, I'm giving this a three stars simply because I do feel like 
there was a lot of telling us things instead of letting us kind of feel it and experience it with Talia, but I was very surprised at how invested I was in the story and the characters, and I really do want to move on with the rest of the trilogy. So I think this was a great introduction. I think this is very much an introductory book. But yeah, I was slightly surprised at how young it did read, and I was very surprised at the fact that our main character was 13. I missed that somehow. But I really, really enjoyed it, and I'm excited to move on. I think I'm going to move on next month, just because I don't want to spend too much time away from the series and forget details of this first book, since so much did happen in such a short amount of time, but I'm actually extremely excited to move on. So that's really cool. I'm really hoping that I end up wanting to explore the entirety of the Valdemar world. I don't remember how many books are actually in this world, but I think it's quite a few. I think it's upwards of like 15 or 16. So that being said, I have another video to watch. And she also said that I'll want to open it immediately. So I'm assuming it's something that might already be like on my immediate TBR right now. <laughs> Torture number three. <laughs> okay, final pick. We got a blue and a green. Let's pick the other color, which is the other blue. Let's see. Let's go this one. Uh, what does it say? Social media scroll. Oh, this is dangerous. Okay, social media scroll. Let me grab my phone and do a screen recording and let's figure out what Steph's gonna read. It has to be the, a book that I've read. So it has to be a book that I've read and rated highly um, cause I'm not gonna do my girl dirty like that. And also that's on your physical TBR. I'm always down for a challenge. So let us see what we can find. So I am screen recording right now and I'm gonna scoot over so that I can pop this right here on the side. I don't think the measure is on your TBR. It's on my TBR though. Let's see what we can find and I'll have to check back and forth if it's on your TBR. Mary. Chlorine. Have you read Chlorine? I feel like Chlorine would be on your audiobook TBR because I know I have it from Libro FM, so I know you have it too. Might have to check with you on whether or not you've read Chlorine. Hmm. The Road of Bones is one that I know that's on your TBR on Kindle Unlimited, but I have not read that one, so I don't know if it's any good. Let's see. House of Flame and shadow hmm hmm that's an option i don't know if i would say that's a book that i enjoyed but that is an option let's see but i know you haven't read house of sky and breath yet so i can't even pick that if i wanted to A Court of Silver Flames. Hold on. Let me cross-reference. <gasps> no, you have chlorine. I'm looking at the pictures and I see chlorine. Okay. So, I haven't read chlorine, though. So, that's going to be my back pocket option is chlorine. Um. Oh. A Court of Silver Flames is right there. Okay. Well, it's decided then. It's decided. Okay. My copy of A Court of Silver Flames is buried under a lot of stuff, but I, and I refuse to try and find it. But the third and final book on your TBR is A Court of Silver Flames by Miss Sarah J. Maas. So I think we've got a very interesting mix of things. We've got enemy to lovers fantasy romance. We've got classic fantasy. And we've got more fantasy romance so this is exciting this is an interesting mixed bag i'm very excited to hear your thoughts on these if you want to buddy read miss mercedes lackey let me know i hope that you have an amazing time with these books and i love you so 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 much and i can't wait to see the vlog bye <laughs> bye <laughs> well 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 i was correct
And I actually have it right here because I'm reading this for the House of Asselong and we are on A Court of Silver Flame and the live show is this coming Sunday, so I have to read it this week. And now it makes sense why she was like, maybe you should watch this video ASAP my friend. So A Court of Silver Flame, I guess, is the fourth book, if you don't count the novella, in the Akatar world, and this is the start of a new trilogy, but it does follow the aftermath of the original Akatar trilogy. It's just now following a different character, so this is Nesta's book, and if you know anything about Akatar, Nesta is the main character, Farah's oldest sister, and she has a lot of anger within her. People have very polarizing opinions about Nesta. They either hate her or they love her. But my opinion is that like, if all of the things that happened to Nesta happened to me, I too would be a bitch. I think. I think I would. So I'm under the impression that this is supposed to be kind of like a healing journey for Nesta. And I know that supposedly she falls in love with somebody in here, but I don't want to give too much away because again, this is the fourth book in a series. So I will be as vague as possible when talking about this and giving updates. And I am excited. I am very excited. I'm just worried that I'm not going to love this one as much as some other people do. And I really want to love it because I loved Akamath because it was a healing journey. And so I'm hoping that I have the same feelings and emotions. We'll see. We'll see. Hello. Hi. Um, I just got off of work and can I say the sun still being out just makes me happy every single time, every single time, every year it happens. It's not a surprise. It's not a surprise, but every single year it just makes me so happy. So I've been reading A Court of Silver Flame and I am actually like 60 something percent in. I am 472 pages in and I just want to preface by saying I'm going to be talking about negatives right now because I do have a lot of negative feelings but I don't hate this book. I really don't. I think I feel more ambivalent about things than I even have negative emotions. My negative feelings like aren't even coming from a place of like hating this book and hating the characters. I actually, I love both of these characters. As a matter of fact, it's very interesting because the way that everyone else is portrayed, characters that you've already met in the previous trilogy are seemingly so bland and written in a way that like is not compelling at all compared to what you already know about them. It's a very weird feeling. And I'm assuming it's because of the POVs that we're getting. Like this is from Nesta's POV and Nesta has a lot of anger towards many things in her life, but especially a lot of the people surrounding her. And then Cassian, well, I don't really understand the Cassian part because like these are his buds. Like he loves them intensely. So I don't really know if it's like because of whose book this is, but some of the characters in here that I love in the trilogy are just like, really bland for me in here or just like kind of annoying and i'm i'm just assuming it's because it's nesta's book that's all i can assume that's all to say that i really do enjoy cassian and i do enjoy nesta i almost called them cassia <laughs> I can't sit here and say that I'm like a Nesta hater in general, and I always love a healing journey. I especially love seeing these women go on healing journeys. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite books in the trilogy is Akamath, Court of Mist and Fury, because I love the healing journey that Farrah goes on. All I can say is that there's a specific trope in here that never really seems to work for me in romance, and I think that is one of the huge problems that I'm having. And secondly, I think the impact of Nesta's healing journey only hits me every once in a while because so much of this book is very repetitive. And once again, with another Sarah J Maas book, I'm questioning page length. Like I don't think this needed to be 700 pages to get the point that you were trying to get across simply because of how repetitive it is, which is funny. This seems to be a theme because that was one of my problems with the crown of oaths and curses was the repetitive writing style. This also has that, but it's not so much the writing style that's repetitive in terms of like things being told to you. It's just the monotony of the same things continuing to happen over and over again. And honestly, I'm really enjoying Nesta healing and like being very self-reflective. I think she does a very good job at being self reflective in so many ways and like reminding us that she knows certain things that she's done in her past were shitty and she's aware of that. And you actually get to see a lot more about their past, like Nesta, Farah, and Elaine's past as children and like what their parents were like, because Nesta is the oldest of the three sisters. So it's been interesting getting that backstory because we didn't really get to hear that much about it from Farah because a lot of Farah's recollections of their past and their childhood are coming from a place of being really young and also like not really knowing her mother that well because of the 
the circumstances that they grew up in. So it's been really interesting to get that backstory. I definitely like the library and I like learning about some of the side characters that we're introduced to in here who work at the library as well. And that's how Nesta has met them and created these friendships. And in here, I think the found family is kind of just unfolding for Nesta. And it's really cute. I do love it. I'm just not super invested in too much going on here and too many of the characters, but I love Nesta and I love Cassian. And I definitely think that Cassian remains to be one of my favorite male characters within this story. But I don't know, I'm just feeling like things are very repetitive and I don't feel like the page count, the word count is justified for what has happened. There have been some interesting developments that I'm sure are not gonna play out in here, but will probably play out for the rest of the trilogy. And maybe I said this when Aaron picked this book, I was spoiled for like a major, major event that happens in here, which I think is probably gonna happen towards the end, just based off how this book has been going. Um, I think it's gonna happen towards the end and I wonder how impactful it will be for me because I know what the spoiler is, but I obviously don't know how we got there. I don't know how it like resolves completely. I'm interested to see that play out. Yeah, I'm just feeling like I wish I were more connected to this. I don't know. I'm just kind of sad. finished Silver Flame and I finished this last night because I could not sleep. I couldn't sleep to save my life. I fell asleep at like 10 and then I woke up at one in the morning and just saw every hour pass me by. So I decided to listen to this while I was laying in bed wallowing and I ended up finishing it. And truly the last 30% is the best part of this book and confirms to me that this did not need to be as long as it was. Sadly, because of how I felt about the beginning of this book, this is getting like a 3.5 for me, which sucks because I really thought that this would be like a four or five star. I really thought I would love this as much as I love Akamath because it had all of the ingredients, all of the things that I loved from Akamath, but the pacing was really, really off for me. Obviously, I felt certain things were repetitive, and I also struggled with side characters, but Cassie and Anesta absolutely love them. I loved how their story unfolded. I can't say too much about this again, but I do want to go into kind of a spoilery section, which isn't going to be too long. It's just going to be the things that didn't work for me that I can't really talk about because of spoilers. So I will put a little thing on the screen that says spoilers and I'll put a timestamp down below so that you know when the spoilers are over just in case you don't want to hear these. But basically the other reason that this did not work for me is because I do not like the friends with benefits type of thing. Not that they exactly were friends because Nesta loathed Cassian I guess but I just typically love slow burn and so I think I struggled because they were already having sex and like 
constantly having sex. There are so many sex scenes in here that I started skimming over them because it was kind of just the same thing over and over again. And it wasn't until the last 30% that there's, you know, the big confession of them being mates and being in love with each other. But I think because I'm such a big lover of tension and slow burn, I just really struggled through the romantic parts of this and I wanted to be more invested in it than I was. And that was the whole thing that was kind of repetitive for me is that they were training to learn how to fight and they were having sex. That it's literally chapter by chapter. It was either fighting, fucking. And also it was just interesting how bland so many of the side characters are. Like Farron and Reese are characters that I really enjoyed in their own trilogy. And I know that this is from Nessa's perspective, so it's a little bit skewed, but even though they were annoying at times, they were also just extremely bland. I realized that Azriel is someone who comes off as very bland to me in this book specifically, which I didn't feel that way in the trilogy. More is just kind of there, but I get that that's sort of to give the spotlight to other characters in here, and especially because Nesta is forming her own found family with the two girls Emery and Gwyn which I really liked and I hope that we get to see more of them because I would love to get to know them even more and I will say that in the last 30% was when all of the emotions kind of came out of me because they do that trial and I loved that by the way unexpected absolutely loved it and the fact that they got to like the base of the mountain close to winning and they confess all of these things to each other that they've just been holding back and that have been holding them back personally it was just so emotionally overwhelming and I loved it so much and I really loved the confession between Nesta and Cassian. So in the last 30% there was a lot that happened that I really really loved. Now the Farah birthing scene, I knew this was coming. This was the thing that was spoiled for me and I get very frustrated by this because how many times does Farah have to die for people to have these big revelations about their relationships and loving each other and like forgiveness? Like why does this girl always have to die? I actually really hated that part. I really did. The only part about it that was like even slightly redeemable I guess was Reese falling to his knees and being like I'm so sorry I suck. But even then I was like you guys could have done this a different way without her you know passing away. So yeah, I just had a few more complaints than I expected within this book. But overall, especially the last 30%, it was almost one of those situations where I almost gave this a four stars simply because of how much I loved the last 30% of this book. But that doesn't really justify how I felt for a larger portion of this book. So I'm settling on a 3.5. I'm hoping that someday when I do go back and reread this, I feel differently because I actually didn't know certain things about the romance in here, which are tropes that I don't like. So I think maybe going into it next time, knowing that I'll have a different experience, hopefully. Hopefully. Who knows? So that all being said, we now get to go into the part of am I keeping these books or am I listing these books? So we have the Complete Arrows trilogy, which I read only the first one, Silver Flame, obviously, and The Crown of Oaths and Curses. And I think you can probably guess if I'm going to keep or list these, maybe? <laughs> but I am actually keeping all of them, which is a very big success because I think in almost every episode, I've listed at least one thing. And in this one, I'm keeping all of them. Usually I would say something that's a 3.5, I typically wouldn't keep, but because of the fact that it's part of an overall series and the series isn't done, and at some point I will likely reread the series, I am keeping this. But the way that I typically keep things or gauge if I wanna keep things is will I reread it? Because even if it's a five stars, it doesn't necessarily mean that I ever wanna revisit the world or the book for whatever reason and so sometimes I'm totally okay with getting rid of those books but in this case I'm keeping everything and I think that I'll revisit most of these I mean obviously I'm finishing this trilogy and the rest of the books are in this specific bind up and the second book comes out in April so I definitely will be revisiting this world and depending on how the second book goes will also determine whether or not I keep the entirety of the series overall I think this was a great success and I do think that's in part due to Aaron because Erin does know my taste fairly well. And I always know that when she highly rates something and tells me that I'm gonna love it, that I typically do. So I'm not gonna lie, I do trust Erin with my life, not only book-wise, but like generally, because we are best friends. She's my best friend. And on that note, you can go to the links down below and you can check out Erin's channel and subscribe to her. But also I'm gonna link one of my favorite videos down below for you to watch. It's her vampire vlog. I think that is a treasure. I think that it is a treasure to behold. So yeah, please go check her out, subscribe, check out that video. And if you have made it this far and you have nothing else to say, feel free to leave a mask emoji down below and I will talk to you next time, friends. Bye.